Basque Country. Uh, stage 6 of Basque Country, been a, frankly, a horrible race so far. Um, could have done with maybe a, a GC, proper GC stage earlier in the race. But nonetheless, this is a cracker from Ibar to Ibar. Uh, seven climbs of note, 140Ks, and the first two are quite difficult. The Azurki and Gawler, they uh, have steep sections in them, 5K, 7%, but there's like a 3K, 11% part in the first one, and then there's 10K, 6%, but steep at the start. Then the Crabble in after a valley. They're fast valleys too. They're on good sort of highway wide roads. So really like having teammates in these false light downhill valleys, you can rip it. But that's before the Crabble in, 5K, 10% with a ramp ass in there. Descent Valley, Thrabakua, 3K, 7%. Some punchy hills. Uh, another descent, Izua, 4K, 9%. Uh, this is where Arate climb Vingard went absolutely fucking nuclear on this last year. <laughs> um, put 40 seconds into Enrique Mas, who was in decent shape. Uh, then another descent to the Urca Regi, 5K is 4.6%. And in this last 20K of this stage, you can really play because, well, not with the whole stage really, but these valleys. I remember Martinez got, uh, he flicked Remco because Remco was chasing in this, in this final as well or on the Urca Regi. I think he might have got dropped by Martinez. Then there's a descent before a false flight uphill run into Ibar on the on the good roads. So yep. really, really cracking stage. Uh Skelmoser starts the stage in a in a unenviable position. Yeah. Like the worst place to start the stage. <laughs> Two seconds and a shovel. Four seconds ahead of Ayuso. Thirteen seconds ahead of McNulty. I'll just do in the UAE guys. Thirty-two mm -hmm. ahead of Del Toro. And forty-seven ahead of Soler. So there's four UAE within fifty seconds of him. And there's stage bonies here, obviously. So there's also Bilbao on 15, Vauquelin on 6, uh, and C-Rod on 50. So unenviable place to be. Am I misremembering, Benji? Okay. I seem to recall live images from the start of this stage in 22 when it was the UAE disaster class. Hmm... I remember at least live images from just before the top of the Gorla climb. I don't remember if the stuff before that was also live. But there was more than this year, I think. Yeah, I think. Ah, uh, it's a different stage now. Yeah, now Arate is gone, eh? So basically, yeah, the stage is, you know, it finishes on Arate back then. Yeah, and and they had a longer start before the before the uh, Azurki. So maybe oh, they okay. did. So I'm not misremembering. Maybe the action kicked off in the same place, but there was an hour beforehand. There was untelevised. But yeah, oh, okay. that was when there was. Inc it's incredible break. You always get incredible break jumping and chaos. It's a shame it's not fully televised. It's like the yeah. There's a few. St Don't get me wrong. Giro RCS save your money on them sprint stages. Save your money. Okay, when the break goes, send the helicopter, send those guys for lunch because I'm not watching in the middle of the stage on the half of the sprint stages. No one is. No one is. Dauphiné final stage, Basque final stage, Paranese final stage. They need, they're the stages that need war to war coverage. But anyway. Yeah. What was, uh, what was PCS Live Stats telling us about that chaos, Benji? Well, we saw moves with Riders that are a bit of a gap, for example, Sipkus was in a move, Chavez was in a move, we're talking about, because on six minutes and a bit more than that, uh, Chavez on two minutes 30 roughly, and we see other riders in there that could potentially be a satellite rider for someone else, for example, Pauke Molema was in that group, Arieta was there for UAE, so, uh, so I'm thinking, okay, Steven Kruiswijk, Sipkus, Visma is trying to win a stage here. That's that, that part of the breakaway solved. Only is in there, he's trying to move up NGC by being in the breakaway, by slipping into a move that is hard to control. That's that categorization. UAE, Arieta, satellite rider. Pure rider ahead to then bridge towards with other riders is how I perceived it. And that was the first group. James Shaw was also there for, uh, with Chavez, together for EF. And Duby was there for, what team is that again? Total? Yeah. Total, yeah. Second group. Started being created behind that. Mühlberger, Sobrero, Hamilton, Juliensen, Izagire, Horka, that is. Schurtbox, another satellite rider for UAE. Yes, Sobrero could also be that for Bora, though. So 
keep that in mind too. Suterlin, Tarame, Tusfeld, Rivera, Janssens, and De La Cruz. Rivera maybe a satellite rider for Carlos Rodriguez there. Then that is the break formation is how I would say. That's what we see after... I'd say that's basically the situation after the Gorla climb, right? We're talking about two groups ahead, not really together, with the peloton on roughly two minutes? Yeah, it was a big gap. And, and it's strange because you can't see what's happening, but it's yep. not all pure climbers in there. It's like Yul Jensen, Sutherland, Bax have made that. Mm -hmm. So Trek have made a decision there. Trek were happy with that. They put Mollema yep. in and they were happy with that move, which... I mean, yeah, maybe you don't want to jump all day. And maybe listen, damage there's, control? There's no GC threats in that break. No offense to Brandon Rivera, but mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no one you really need to be worried about. Chavez on 230, it's not, he's not going to win by 230. So I guess they decide, all right, controlled stage, Molma in there as a satellite, better than a real guy like Soler, because I thought Soler was going to try to get in. Yep. But I guess if he gets in, maybe they don't get the cooperation from uh, EF and others. But uh, it was, I think, the expected chess moves. Yeah. UAE got a few pawns. Trek, I think, are okay with it. Visma are trying to do stuff for the stage. But it's no real knockout blow yet. Uh, but then we get to... Get to the Gawler, still pacing. And we know it's going to kick off on Kravalin, Uh I think. I'm not sure if you've already gone to Kravalin, Benji. I haven't. I haven't mentioned Krabbelin. Krabbelin is that, that very steep climb in the middle you mentioned in the, in the route preview. And we do see that move. We see a move by Mark Soler together with uh, William Junior Lasser, if I recall correctly, for a quick step. So two riders trying to bridge towards the front on Krabbelin. Was I surprised that we didn't see anyone else trying? Was I surprised that it's Soler and not Del Toro, for example? I don't know. Soler is a good move to go into these moves, but is it me or was Del Toro relatively passive today i was surprised as well i thought i thought so who you jumped with early early and mm -hmm. then if del toro goes because like trek up to this point have done a fantastic job yeah really really outstanding i don't know if it was let me check it was bernard uh god when you go through the start list of this race uh the amount mm -hmm. of dns's and dns spelling i'll finish this uh bernard felline did a great job but then uh bagioli was pacing Krabalin. Mm -hmm. And I thought, if, if Del Toro jumps now with Arietta ahead and Bax in, the, in between somewhere, Trek a fuck. Because Del Toro is also a good descender. And it's like, if yep. Schelmo is going to react on Del Toro, 70Ks from the finish with Ayuso in the wheel, that puts him in a really tough spot. With Soler, I thought Trek did a really good job. You let him jump, he could blow up. And he, he, was, he was doing, he was pulling all sorts of faces. He gets over the top of Krabbelin. He's in between. Arietta's way ahead in the group. And Trek is still at Gagan Hart. And it actually, I'm not sure it was a huge advantage for UA yet uh, mm -hmm. with, with Soler ahead because you have a, a smaller group. Kreisweig, Kuss, Mulberger, Chavez. He waits for Shaw to come back. Molma's up there as well. So Trek still have a satellite themselves. Arietta only. And then in between is Bax. Uh, who got dropped in, uh, I don't know what happened to Rivera. And basically we have now a rolling valley area with the Trabacur, which is also like not that hard. It's a high, it's, it's a wider road. And before the Izua hard climb, there's like 30 Ks to play in. And Trek, do a great job pacing. Bora drops Sobrero back, Benji. And so mm -hmm. Trek get bailed out as well. Jungles yeah. gets on the front, starts ripping it. And so Soleil gets across the backs. And this, it was looking really good for Schielmoz because they've used up backs, who shot Soler went across to. Soler's now only got, he's got a minute, maybe less. They're getting across the, the early days break with the, the Visma and EF guys. And it's just Arietta, Arietta pacing with him against uh, Jungel Sobrero and, and Gegenhardt. But uh, I don't know, at that point again, it was like 50-50. It really was yeah. who was going to be strongest on Azua. Yep, that is true. And once we get to Izua, that's really the final, like, steep climb where you can really make that difference. And in the breakaway, the difference was being made by Esteban Chavez dropping Sepkas, dropping Molema, dropping Mulbegger, Kreisweg. Mark Soler was kind of. Did Mark Soler drop or was he still on the way up? 
towards the front. On Izua? Yeah. He waited. I, I mean, before, before the attacks behind, was Mark Soler ever with Chavez in the group, or was he still moving up as Chavez attacked? They were pacing, and Chavez just did his, oh, okay. his normal stupid attack where people are pacing at 450 watts, and he's like, why don't I attack at 550? And then, you know, he does, I don't know why he attacks when people are pacing super hard. I think Soler, <laughs> was, Soler was looking good. I, I don't yeah. know why Chavez did that. Uh, but yeah, Skelmo's attacks. Catches <laughs> Ayuso by surprise. Arietta's early. put early too. No one at UAE had attacked him yet. Del Toro's dropped. And by the way, Arietta starts pacing Ayuso, who'd also been pacing Soler full gas all the way to Azua. And I get it. Like, attack is the best form of defense, I guess. But oh, I don't I think he needed to. Soler was kind of in check because if you go over the top with Ayuso and with all these other GC guys and Soler's ahead on his own, People will cooperate with you, I think. I think the reason that Trek did it was because Valcamolimo was dropping at the front. And the only option for him to be a satellite rider was when he was still ahead of Skelmose. And I think maybe that is the reason that they chose to attack at that point. But the cap was still at 35 seconds. If it's like 20, then I'd say, yeah, sure. But I would have I waited until UAE made a first move and then tried to counter it if you can. Or is, yeah. he or is he scared of Del Toro rolling attacks on him? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if you feel good, you go. But yeah, Ayuso seems to come back patiently, counters, drops him. And now it's a nightmare situation for Skelmoser and Trek because you have... Uh... Oh, by the way, Kreuzweig, and I, could, I knew it was happening. Happened in Catalonia too. It happens again today. He's stronger than Kus. And uh, yeah. drops Kus. Kus should have been pulling for, for him almost earlier. But anyway, yeah. I did, irrelevant in the end. Uh, only had also anticipated and attacked and gone, gone clear of Soler. Nightmare situation for Trek. Last hard climb. Ayuso's going clear. Soler's ahead. Molimer's dropping. Molimer basically can't get over the top of Izua with Skelmosa, and Ayuso's really riding away from him. I don't know what gap he takes. Maybe not that big. He takes maybe like 25 seconds on Ayuso. Only he's got another 15, 20 seconds. Uh, and then Skelmoza stabilizes a bit. He gets across to Soler. They ping the descent, but Skelmoza comes back on the descent. Absolutely whacks it with Rodriguez. He comes back to the group. And now we it's like, it's really interesting. You got the Uakaregi, which is a 5k, 5% climb. It's not that hard, but like it's still... People have been dropped and lost the race there before from memory. Uh, and Ayuso catches Skelmos and napping slash was stronger. He gets that climb. Mm -hmm. uh, Soler had been pulling full gas. Chavez was in his wheel. He was in the early break. Mistake from Skelmos. Ayuso attacks, gets a gap. Rodriguez counters and, uh, and the group and gets to his wheel. Yep. And that's all she wrote. Skelmos never gets back to Ayuso. He starts relaying with, uh, with Rodriguez in, in this sort of up and down valley. And uh, Shkelmoza gets worked over, even though it wasn't really... He never got worked over by one-twos from UAE, yep. but UAE always had satellite riders and pressure this whole stage. So they did a really good job, and Ayuso uh, wins GC, uh, doesn't contest the stage with Rodriguez, who also uh, pulled really hard with him. He actually moves into second on GC because Soler, yep. I'm not sure why he did it, but he sprints Shkelmoza and, uh, and takes away four bonus seconds from him. <laughs> And uh, that actually gives Rodriguez second on GC by one second. Two things about that. Well, three things, actually. First of all, UAE's tactics today. We've spoken about, a lot about UAE in the past having shit tactics when Pogacar is not in the race. Today, their tactics were on point. Sending satellite riders ahead. Yes, it's always dependent on whether your rider is good enough to jump towards your satellite riders. But even if that doesn't work, you still have the riders ahead to pull you or try to pull you back or 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 restrict the potential damage when you do get dropped in the end. So I think full props on the tactical side today when it comes to UAE. Second thing, Carlos Rodriguez. I had the opinion a few days ago when he had that shady hand injury that it was weird that the team let him start when he was kind of far in GC, but proven wrong. That's, that's certain. Yes, his hand looked bad, but he's now second in GC, so it looks like it was the decision after all. Third thing, it is kind of funny that the first Walter victory of Ineos is a gifted victory. Sorry, but 
That's hilarious yeah, to me. Yeah, but not all, it, it's not really a gift, you know? It, it is a gift from Ayuso in that final, but Rodriguez was strong enough to be there and have that exchange happen. Yeah, but if, 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 Rod, if Ayuso doesn't tell Rodriguez, I will give you the stage, then Rodriguez will not pull so much with him, and I think Rodriguez was strong enough to beat him in the sprint anyway. I don't anyway. think so. Well, I don't I think use, so because if the, I gap that, the, last 5Ks. the gap that a user needs is five seconds. There's four bonus seconds, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Three but could then, just surplus. So he, he needed like five seconds max. Like he probably wouldn't risk it that far, but I yeah. think he could have surplused a lot in the final and a user was being kind here, which props to Rodriguez. So one, two, three for Spain in the, the stage. Rodriguez winning ahead of a user, as as you said. Then Soler on 41 seconds with Schelmers and Only. Good stage for Only out of the early break. Uh, Molima, in the end, no help at all, really, for Trek. He finishes on 131 ahead of McNulty and Bill Bow. Chavez on 133. Del Toro finishes 10th on 141. So he must have struggled. He got dropped at the end of this stage. He ran out of steam. Ran out of steam. Vokala on 230 in a group with Bodin, Izagira, Hindley. Uh, we don't really know why Bora paced so hard in the valley, maybe for Shackman GC, but uh, that was a mistake, obviously. Uh, Langolotti, Butrago, Menki, Menjis, Stown and Mitit finishes in that group, and actually Kus and Kreisweig, they uh, get gapped by that group in the finish. Uh, yeah. Hater then 336 with the Aramburu Shackman. Uh, group in terms of GC, Ayuso mm -hmm. wins. Uh, 42 seconds ahead of Rodriguez, 43 seconds ahead of Schelmerza, Soler on 123 in fourth, McNulty 146, Bilbao 148 in sixth, then Del Toro 215, Vocal out 238, Izaguera 306, and Baudin mm. top 10 on 307. So uh, I think but... Petrago and Hindley 11th and 12th would be a little bit disappointed to see, see that and have names like Baudin and Izaguera ahead of them, I think. Hindley and Sharkman both out of the top 10, which I think Bora before the stage didn't want that to happen. Um, Sharkman dropping on this stage isn't a real surprise for me, though. I just expected Hindley to be better, I guess. Um, I think for the rest, when it comes to this race, I was expecting UAE to really take GC today because they just had the numbers in GC and the stage really works with that. But it's somehow still impressive that they pulled it off as a team for me because we've seen some really weird shit in the past from, from the in races. So um, I'm quite happy to see that because that also gives some hope. Well, we don't know when it comes to Vingegaard's injury, when it comes to Emko's injury towards the Tour de France, but Yoi is looking a bit more scary. Yeah, like everything I that happened in last week. Yeah, they had a couple of like clear workers, which helped. Like Bax and Arietta were clearly workers. Yeah. And they were strong in that break, so that helps. Um, Soler also very happy to work for Ayuso, and Ayuso was on the radio talk demanding it. And I think the yeah. hierarchy is quite clear with Ayuso, yeah, actually. Should be. Um, so, like, so, yeah, Del Toro is like on the edge because like he can, he can literally be co leader in races, but it's like, a user still higher, and I think today proves that as well. Yeah, Ayuso is better than Del Toro. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Del Toro wasn't as good. I mean, the guy's 20 years old, but um, just to his... <laughs> Washed. <laughs> yeah, but his TT, for example. Yeah. Uh, 13th behind Yoni Zagira and uh, Vingegaard when in... But it's... It's better than a lot of riders still, eh? It's better than the Godou Landa kind of vibe. So I don't yeah, think that TT was horrible. Yeah, compared to his Algarve TT, where he was eight seconds behind Kung on a, on a longer yep. course that was hilly. So, um, but yeah, he's, he's having a, a fantastic season. He's already top. He's finished top in the top 10 in three World Tour stage races. It's yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, so he, he's having a cracking, cracking start to the year and his uh, pro career. The and are you so we should probably talk about it a little bit. Okay. It's his first uh, GC win in a, mm -hmm. in a World Tour stage race. He'd won stages in in Swiss. Uh, he'd actually finished in Swiss nine seconds behind Schelmoser in GC in the end. Perversely, both. Stage races racked by devastating crashes, obviously. Um, 
bizarre coincidence, but uh, he, he wins. He gets the better of Skelmerza here, and uh, he's, it's his third race win this season. He uh, what's he got next? He's doing the Tour de France. Yep. That's a pretty good one-two punch with Poggy in the Tour. I firmly think so. And it's also, like, Poggy is still higher in, in the hierarchy, but after riding in the Giro, that might not be so clear, depending on how Pogacar finishes that Giro. As in, will, it, will he be at the same level going into the Tour de France? Will he be at a better level than the Giro? Maybe he starts the Giro under underprepared on purpose, stuff like that. So, I don't know, it's, it's interesting. It's going to be a weird vibe going into the Tour, because I... I won't have a clear view on how close everybody will be because they had a different lead up to the race, if that makes sense, when it comes to the UAE leaders. And I don't know, it, it just makes it more and more clear that Joao Almeida is dropping in the ranks because he's now under, under Yuzo, which had been clear already, but oh, it's, it's even more Almeida. clear now. Uh, with Vine out, Almeida to the Giro as a climbing domestic for Poggy. <laughs> what? <laughs> He was a good domestique, to be honest. He was really good in Catalonia. He was yeah. outstanding. But, like, but, Portugal will be in uproar. Yeah, I don't think he'd be too happy be happy about that. I think he wants to do the Tour de France for the first time. Yeah, uh, exactly. I don't, I don't actually know if he actively cares about being co-leader in the Tour de France as much no, as no, being no. in I the Tour de France. I think he just wants to do the Tour. I just think he wants yeah. to do something different. He's done the Giro four times. Yeah, he just, I spoke to him yeah. in the off-season. We were talking about influencer boxing fights for some reason and he was pretty fanatically clear on the fact that he wants to ride the Twitter front so I, I i think you've got hit the nail on the head there is that a saying yep nail on the head fuck i'm getting uh, british you're getting very yeah uh advocate of the devil the that's all got to keep that don't, <laughs> don't let the people try and tell you otherwise <laughs> that um, one guy that told me to say it the opposite way is no, now like oh god <laughs> you can't put normal sayings on merch t-shirts so, uh, that's all from us today. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not story time. Oh, sorry. Come on. I didn't. I didn't get a couple for no reason, mate. I generally think Patrick, you should come to France next year and ride Roubaix Challenge because it was it was actually really fun. Like outside of the fact that you hated the Podestrat in Flanders, <laughs> I think this is about as bad as the Podestrat. <laughs> But it, it was actually really fun because it's doing it alone, like riding couple sections alone with us, like that's great and all. Riding it solo is is uh, okay with us, it's great. But doing it with like surrounding, there were three thousand people on course, like really, yeah. I, I was like people in in groups. It was also cool to to meet other CP fans along the way by the side of the road, some in the peloton itself, then at the finish line, which was the velodrome. Um, I was, sh is it weird that I was more shocked that my fingers hurt more than my palm of my hand on the hard couple sectors? I don't know. I don't have enough experience. And that. also, the terrifying thing in like a sportive setting is not the cobbles itself, but the people, if you're slower, like myself, flying past you on the cobbles on the left and the right of you. Because I'm like, I'm taking the fucking crown of these cobbles, guys. I'm sorry. You guys will have to go gauche or droite, and then they keep shouting gauche because they're passing on the left. But uh, I, I really enjoyed myself. I did the 70k version. I feel like it, it gives you a, a more of an insight of like how riders approach into the cobble sector, what court. Like for example, Carrefour, the last portions, headwind, stuff like that. Uh, it was nice seeing that in person, if that makes sense. And um, I also find the, the fucking metal really nice. Like, I'm genuinely, like the cobble, sorry, but I don't really care. It's a rock and there's no engraving on it, so that's gonna be, gonna be stocked somewhere, but that metal looks fucking nice, so you gotta do it for the metal patch, right? Come on. Okay. Well, right now I'm planning some, some Spanish riding trips uh, with some mountains, but yeah, maybe Ooh. next year the classics? Uh, yeah, exactly. Is it, Where is it gonna be, Benji? Is it gonna be in the Costa Blanca, the Costa Brava, Mallorca? The classics. Uh, no, no, the Spanish, the Spanish oh. riding. <laughs> Ain't no Costa Blanca in North in in the Benelux. I was really confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not that I've seen. Uh, all the Asturias. Who knows? Uh, that's what I'm planning. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll take that. I'll take that under advisement. Okay, that's all for us. We'll see you at the recap of Men's Roubaix tomorrow. Until then, ciao.